So let's talk a little bit about measures of central tendency for a numeric variable. So specifically, we're going to talk about the mean, what's also known as the arithmetic average, a trimmed mean, a median, as well as the mode. Okay. You likely already know about most or all of these, but I'm sure that we're going to be able to add something new for you here, or at least give you a new way of seeing some things. So to do so, we're going to use this simple example here, where I've got grades recorded for eight students. So I've got them placed here already in order from smallest to largest. Um, and I've also put the points here on a number line. And I'm using only eight observations, again, so we can have a small, simple data set that we can do all the calculations quickly by hand with and focus on the concepts. So let's start by looking at what we call the sample mean. Something that you likely already know, it's an average or arithmetic average. And this often gets abbreviated using X bar or mu hat. As noted earlier, we often use Latin letters to represent estimates from a sample, and we use Greek letters to represent the true or population value. So sometimes we'll also throw a hat on top of the Greek letter to indicate that it's a sample estimate of the population value. So the sample mean, first writing it in a notation form, it's the sum i going from 1 up to n of xi divided by n. Okay, so let's translate that. What does that notation mean? A note on notation, it can be a bit difficult at first to translate. Right? Notation, uh, mathematical notation is essentially writing in a different language. And we don't want it to get in the way and confuse things, but it also is important to be able to have a concise language that we can write things um, simply and short um, to represent bigger ideas. So here we're saying sum i going from 1 up to n xi. So that's x1 plus x2 plus x3 all the way up to xn divided by n. And in our sample, that's saying x1, the first observation is 25. x2, the second is 70. x3, the third one is 70. Fourth one is 72. All the way up to 90 divided by the total number of observations. And that's going to come out to be 71.5. Okay, so again, likely not a new idea, but this does a few things. First, it gets us um, used to a little bit of notation, and we're also going to um, hopefully learn to think about the mean in a slightly different way. A few things to note about the sample mean is that it's sensitive to outliers. So when there's outlying values or extreme values, the mean can get pulled towards those. So this small grade of 25 is pulling the mean towards it. Right? We can see the mean is 71.5. And, and if we were to use other descriptions of the center, we might use something a little bit closer to you know, 75 or 77, something like that. The, the key point is that the mean is sensitive to outliers or skewness or extreme values, and it gets pulled towards those. Another thing to think about, the way I like to think about the mean, is I think of it as being a balance point. So what it does is it takes all these observations and tries to balance them. So let me try and give you a description of what I mean by that. So suppose we were to draw a board here. Right? And all these observations are sitting on top of this board, right? Let's just think of them as little rocks or little weights. Where would we have to put kind of a needle under this board in order for it to balance? If we put it here, what would we notice? It would tip. What if we put it here? Again, it's going to tip that way. Okay, so the mean is looking for a balance point. So if we put it somewhere about in here, that's going to balance these. This far point here is going to have more leverage, right, or pull it down a bit more. So that's the way I've always liked to think of the mean, is it's trying to find a balance point for the data. In a moment, we'll formally define the median, but you likely already know what the median is. The median is the value that cuts the data in half, right, half below, half above. So while the mean and median are both measures of central tendency, they do it in slightly different ways. What cuts it in half versus what tries to balance the data. One more thing to, to mention, this probably won't have much meaning at this point, but it will become more meaningful as we progress through this material. The sample mean is what gets known as a parametric measure. Okay, and as we progress through these ideas, we're going to slowly start to differentiate between parametric versus non-parametric. Right now, they're just words. And one one final thing to attach to the mean before we move on. If we're talking about a population mean, 
And by that we mean the mean or the average for the entire population rather than just a sample. We abbreviate that with mu. Now, the population mean is often a theoretical idea. Usually we don't know the true mean for the entire population, but we're going to start to move back and forth between wanting to know the population mean, taking a sample to try and estimate the mean for a population. So again, those are ideas that we're um, working our way towards. Let's give a very quick mention to the idea of a trimmed mean. Essentially what this is, is calculating the mean, you know, the sample mean, after removing the top and the bottom alpha percent of data. So maybe cutting off the lowest 5% of values, the highest 5% of values, and then calculating the mean. Right, or in this example, maybe removing the lowest and the highest, right, and then calculating the mean of those. Okay, so just trimming off some of the extremes. Again, this is a way of trying to make the mean less sensitive to outliers or extreme values. Um, it's often um, not used very much in, in statistical applications, but it has its place in the world as a summary measure. The next measure is the median. Okay, and again, this is the middle value of the ordered observations. What value cuts the data in half? 50% below, 50% above. So we can see, if we look at these data here, the median is going to be somewhere in here, right? Cuts it four below, four above. Somewhere in between the 72 and the 77. So if our data set has an even number of observations, what we're going to do is take the two that are sharing the middle space and average them. So the 72 plus 77 divided by 2, 74.5. Right, because again, the point that cuts the data in half is somewhere between the 72 and the 77. Some important things to note about the median. The first is that it is not sensitive to outliers. Here, sometimes it gets called robust. If this grade of 25 changed and was 15, the median won't change, right? The mean will, the mean will get pulled lower. And if this grade of 25 was zero, the median is still the same, right? So it's not sensitive to outliers or extreme values. What it does is it cuts the data in half, right? So again, as noted before, the mean is more like a balance point, right? Trying to find what point balances the data. The median is what cuts it half below, half above. And again, another word that doesn't have much meaning now, but will slowly take on meaning as we progress through ideas. The median is a non-parametric measure. Now, let's just take a moment to talk about uh, mean versus median and how they um, compare. So if a distribution is fairly symmetric, so let's write this down. When a distribution is symmetric, the mean is roughly the same as the median. Okay, so the measure of central tendency is going to be the same using mean or median if the distribution is roughly symmetric around its center. If it's skewed, if the distribution is skewed, the mean is kind of, I like to use the word pulled, that's the way I think of it, is pulled towards the skewness. So again, we talked um, previously about the idea of incomes and how these often have a sort of skewed right distribution. When thinking about a distribution that's skewed to the right, the median is this value that cuts the data in half, roughly 50% of the area below, 50% above. Because of these large values, the mean is going to get pulled by those, and the mean ends up being a little bit larger than the median, or getting pulled towards that skewness. Um, one is not a better measure than the other. There's slightly different ways of trying to describe the center. Um, I like to think of if we're talking about incomes, median income is a little bit more useful if you want to know about the, the typical income of an individual, right? The median income would tell us, here's the income, half the people make more than, half make less than, right? So what's the middle income? If we're thinking at a population or governmental level, we might want to know about mean income, right? This is telling us how many dollars are earned per person, right, on average. So again, one is not better than the other. There's slightly different ways of describing the center of a distribution. The last measure of central tendency that we can talk about is the mode. The mode is the most common value. Which value is most commonly um, showing up in our data set? In our little simple example here, it's 70, right? 70 is the one that we've seen most often. So the mode is less commonly used in kind of statistical analysis 
But again, it can be a useful summary measure in different contexts if you want to know what, what value is showing up most frequently. An important reminder, as we've said a few times through this series of videos, we're not going to focus on the calculation of these. Right? We can always have a piece of software calculate the mean and median and mode for us. We don't really want to get stuck on calculating these by hand. Um, but we look at the formulas again to give us some insight and understanding of what, what exactly are they doing and how do they work. Thanks for watching our video. Stick around guys, because we got lots more. I want you to have a nice time. Like our videos.